Seven o'clock. This is the Breezy Point City <laughs> Council meeting for the regular City Council meeting, August first, two thousand sixteen. First order of business is pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everybody. Glad to see we have a good crowd here again. It's always refreshing to see. Uh, first order of business is the consent calendar. We have before you the council minutes from July 5th, 2016. And then you have the check register for the approval of claims totaling $57,393.10, including checks 132868 and 132875 through 132922. Uh, is there anything anyone would like to take off the consent calendar and discuss separately? Councilman Maroney? No. Councilman Schmidt? No. Councilman Williams? No. Councilman Pocket? No, sir. I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, consent calendar. So moved. Second. Your second. Uh, all those in, uh, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Consent calendar is approved. Next item of business is the open forum. Anybody having business to bring before the uh, city council may do so at this time. <coughs> Just state your name and address. And... Good evening, Mayor, council members. My name is Morris Balder, and I live at 29534 County Road 4, Breezy Point. <laughs> My wife, Tracy, and I live there. And uh, back in October of 2015, as you're all aware, there was a sewer backup. The, the system failed at the city of Breezy Point, and uh, we had three inches of raw sewage that flooded the entire first floor of our home. And I'm here tonight to see what we can do to resolve this situation. That's really odd. That's why I'm here, is just okay. to find out how we can resolve this. Right. We are in receipt of the letter that you sent to the council, along with the pictures and everything else. Um, and obviously, you know, the, the damage was quite extensive, and we uh, sorry for your loss on that. Um, we've also been in contact with our uh, insurance adjuster, and there's still some outstanding things that you need to provide her and she needs to resolve okay and that's essentially where it is standing right now uh, we can't do anything until all of those uh, issues are, are resolved we've turned in all the bids and receipts to melissa reinhardt several times i'm not sure what it is that she's short because we've honestly we've turned them in three four times well uh, like I say, I do have this uh, list from uh, Melissa saying that there are some things that are still outstanding. Um, uh, and at this point, you need to get back in touch with her and finalize those things that are uh, uh, outstanding. Okay. Did you, did you know that? Did he get um, a copy of his letter or anything? I know he was not uh, copied on it. This letter was from. Can I just the, she has not let our attorney know any of that information, and there has been contact, and that is not what she states in writing to the attorney. She made an offer, a final offer of 
thousand mm -hmm. dollars, regardless of what our receipts and bids have added up to, with derogatory remarks that we don't pay our bills, which is in writing, because we have not done all the work, because our funds are depleted at this time. Right, and I don't want to get into any of that. You are actually working through the attorney, so is Melissa talking directly to your attorney? Correct. Okay, so. I was actually hoping to resolve it without using an attorney. That's what I thought we could open the dialogue. Well, the fact that the attorney is involved, okay. <laughs> Melissa has to be talking directly to your attorney. And um, I'm sure the, the, the attorney will undoubtedly have a copy of this as to what is still outstanding. And, so and that, that is, was given to you when? Uh, we just got this this morning. So okay. that's so where it stands right now. Contact with her because she was in contact with her attorney Monday, and there was no comments on this. So oh, I find it interesting. Pardon me. Oh. Okay. Joe, do you have anything to say? Well, they can have this copy. Good. I, I would suggest that. Okay. Uh, you and that's as far as we can go. The copy, and, and it does, uh, you know, itemize what things are, are still uh, uh, still outstanding. And, we'll pull uh, everything together, mm -hmm. Mr. Lola, and we'll, we'll resubmit again to her, mm -hmm. and then we'll just uh, wait. Uh, do we hear from her then, or? She'll contact you. If she's talking to your attorney, okay, it'll be resolved between, uh, once all the issues have been identified and, and she's satisfied with the receipts that she's received, then she will be uh, in contact with your attorney. All right. So are you willing to talk with her to see that she continues to have a better attitude and work with us instead of a $5,000 demeaning offer when you see the damage? She went from 3,500 to 5,000. We're on 10 months, 10 months with no resolve. I mean, we don't want to take this to the next level, but we certainly right. can. We want to live here. We just want to get our money back to finish yeah. our home. And that should not come out of our pocket, especially after you adopted an ordinance that is stated in the letter. Well, the, the ordinance as far as what is stated in the letter, that is after the fact. Okay, that does not apply to your case at all. Okay. And so, um, once all the issues are resolved, then that's when uh, uh, the final offer will be, uh, <clears throat> will be made on the table. So that's all I can tell you at this point. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I apologize. I had Otto Schmidt as the mayor. <laughs> that's okay. I see it's you. <laughs> Thank you. Otto was very honored. <laughs> he is honorable. <laughs> Any other uh, issues to come before the council in open forum? I will close open forum. Uh, next item in business is the White Birch 6th uh, edition paving project. We had the public hearing on July 25th. There were seven property owners that uh, showed up for the hearing. Uh, in Several spoke uh, both for and against the project. Um, there's been a total of 66 property owners that are that were sent a notice and were impacted by this. Uh, essentially, the results of the July 25th results were that was uh, there was one party that said no, two parties said yes, two parties had question marks, one party had a, a split between the husband and wife. <laughs> the husband said question mark. <laughs> the husband said no. Or the uh, husband said question mark. The wife said no, and one had no comment. And in the meantime, we have received two emails, uh, one yes and one no. So at this point, um, I will entertain a motion for resolution 1617 to move this project forward and get the engineering estimates. Um, the engineering estimates are expected to be about 57,000 and that would be our at risk amount should the project decide to uh, be held later on. I move 1617, Mayor. Second. Um, discussion? Councilman Maroney. Nothing. Councilman Chet. <clears throat> I think the uh, <clears throat> process as it, as it continues on, uh, I think it as much as I understand the risk the city takes at this 
at a juncture to <clears throat> to proceed with the development of the plans and specs uh, I think we need to have that information um, in hand before before we authorize and move the project and <coughs> You know, for that reason, I'm going to support that resolution. Okay. Councilman Lawrence. No, I, I agree with that. I, I also kind of think when people don't make any comment, if they were drastically opposed, they would comment. Right. So sometimes I take silence as we concur. Councilman Bakken. Agreed. It's in, uh, and I base my vote on it's in line with the city guidelines for the road improvement. And, and and public support. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of resolution 1617? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution 1617 is approved and we will move forward. Uh, next order of business is the uh, uh, engineering proposal from Woodset Smith and Owning <laughs> for the uh, uh, to complete the uh, engineering and uh, the bid estimate <coughs> uh, and they have that's a three-phase project uh, the field survey for 18,500 final design construction <coughs> documentation and bidding was the 38,600 and then the construction phase if we get to that point would be an additional 7,400 so I'll consider a proposal or consider a resolution to uh, uh, approve the engineering services for so move. Second. second uh, further discussion no Councilman Schmidt no Councilman Williams yeah, I just want to clarify something when it says an hourly rate not to exceed $18,000. They don't get $18,000 an hour, right? That's pretty good. I want to know. I want one of those jobs. That, that whatever hourly rate. The fee guys, schedule's in your, in your documentation. The total is that, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I never got that when I was an engineer. I want that. <laughs> Councilman Black. Oh, sir. Those, those in favor? Aye. Aye. The proposal for engineering service for Woodset Smith and Noble is approved. Um, this one was kind of amusing. Uh, the next item is uh, public access county state aid road requirements. Um, ev evidently, anytime county facilities, uh, a project with municipal boundaries, within mu municipal <coughs> boundaries, they need to get permission from the local jurisdiction to do the project. Um, and because of the uh, uh, the, the features at uh, the uh, uh, public access, uh, we are going to be restricting some uh, uh, parking. So we do have to have this resolution 1618 to acknowledge that we have no <coughs> parking restrictions. Um, I'll entertain a motion for resolution 1618 to acknowledge that uh, parking restrictions will be so moved. Be made. Second. Second. Further discussion, Councilman Roney? Uh, it seems kind of redundant since we started the process, but Councilman Schmidt. Was this a resolution provided by the yes. county? Yes. It was? Yeah. I mean, I had not modified it to, to fit our, our needs, but yes. Okay, so they've seen it and they're okay. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Councilman Williams? Uh -huh. Councilman Bakken? No, sir. All those in favor of resolution 1618? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution 1618 is approved. Uh, Mayor and City Council reports. Uh, the administrator review recap. Uh, following the regular City Council meeting of <coughs> July 5th, 2016, we entered into closed session for the sole purpose of performing performance review of the City Administrator. Uh, and the following was a summary of that review and recommendation <coughs> and goals for objectives for 2016-17. Uh, and the results are overall Joe continues to lead the city of Breezy Point effectively and maintaining the city strong. Of the areas evaluated, he meets or exceeds expectations in nearly all areas. His expertise in financial management specifically has brought the city budget to be in excellent shape. This is evidenced by the very successful financial audits received in the past several years and continues <coughs> forward. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but uh, this is basically a summary of what we uh, discussed in the uh, closed session and the, uh, the goals that we want to uh, uh, achieve and work towards are also listed there. 
this is primarily for uh, information purposes. Um, and uh, I would like to uh, thank Joe for again for uh, another um, great year uh, in service. Thank you. Um, next order of business, I'd like to uh, again congratulate our uh, police department. Our uh, police chief made the uh, the cover of Police Chief Magazine. So he's the, the poster child now. No, 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 not poster child. That sounds pathetic. He's the cover boy. Cover boy. <laughs> I was going to say cover girl, but that's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> this has to do with the uh, excellent innovation award that uh, uh, Breezy Point received for their uh, uh, paramedic program. Um, and again, this is one of the best pair, it, it is the best pair. Uh, better program in the state. Yeah. And uh, uh, again, I'd like to congratulate the police department as well as, you know, to be able to identify the peer recognition that uh, the Breezy <clears throat> Point Police Department has received. Uh, council members. Council member Maroney. Uh, the only thing I'd like to just uh, echo on the administrator's review summary was um, being part of the personnel committee. I was um, glad that we held the review for middle of the year. Um, normally it's held on the employee's anniversary date. And I believe that's what, February, Joe? It's early in the year. March, yeah. yeah March. And so um, it was kind of discussed in the personnel committee to hold it into the middle of the year. Um, and I think we should continue going forward with that due to change of council members, um, you know, going forward with Joe on a March anniversary date, having any new council members come in, they wouldn't have the proper experience, you know, only having mm -hmm. two months really into them to give a review. So I was glad that we held off on to that until the uh, middle of the year and hope we continue doing that forward. And it was a great review process this go around. Mm -hmm. Councilman Schmidt. Yeah, I just want to pick up on what Michael has <clears throat> indicated. I think the, uh, the idea of ha having it in the middle of the uh, of the year is probably not a bad idea. I also think the uh, participation with staff in the uh, in the review process is uh, also a good idea, and I think it <coughs> should be continued. Uh, having said that, uh, being on the council when Joe was hired, that was my first year, I guess I, that I was on, and that was seven and a half years ago. I would say that uh, uh, it, it's been a very interesting experience having Joe at the helm because uh, I've, I've witnessed the two sides of the equation where there's a lot of tension between the administrator and the city council and that's never good. Uh, Joe came along and, and uh, these meetings are, uh, I'd have to say, almost enjoyable. Uh, we. Uh, we are not meeting till midnight or 1 a.m. in the morning. Uh, there's not a whole lot of contention that's going on. Uh, in fact, there's very little. I think the preparation that we have in front of us, <coughs> people may wonder how come your meetings are so short. We get, and as if you go online, you'd get the same thing. This packet of information outlines for us the uh, things we should be considering. If we have questions, we call Joe. We try to get those things taken care of before the meeting. But he's a, uh, a great model for whoever uh, succeeds him as administrator in this town, and I hope he sticks around for a couple more years anyhow. Um, although I understand he likes to fish. Yes. And I, I highly recommend retirement, Joe. But just, <laughs> <laughs> just don't. Let's not, let's not get too carried away. <laughs> just don't do it too soon. I don't have anything okay. else, man. Council Williams. Is, I can bring up other issues, right? This is the time. Sure. I mean, it's not just. This is this is your time for okay. uh, bringing up issues. I thought we were just commenting on the review. Okay. No. Um, I have a couple things I'd like to bring up. Uh, first, our butterfly release for next year are the calendars, July 15th, 11 a.m. I'm going to try it a little earlier so that people can have a, a larger part of the day left after they come to our event. And then um, it, I might add some <coughs> excitement, auto into our meetings with this next one. Um, 
in, in view of some of the comments actually in the administrator's review where there were zoning issues and explore putting additional teeth into nuisance ordinances was a comment. Um, I've talked to Scott Sadusky and he's given me a sample of a property maintenance code that he's helped them get in Crosby and Little Falls and <clears throat> not necessarily take theirs word for word but I think we we would be smart to consider looking at something like that in view of some of the issues we've had where we say we're sorry there's nothing we can do you're just going to have to have whatever it is go on next door so um, I, I don't know if the appropriate thing is to start it here looking at or get a presentation maybe to a joint <coughs> meeting from I Scott think, or I think what if you, uh, wanted, you would just uh, uh, give that to our uh, planner and he can get it in front of the <coughs> planning and zoning commission for their uh, review and uh, discussion for future adoption. I wonder if we would want to have a presentation from Scott where he tells us how it works or what, what it enables him to do. Or that's always a possibility. You, go. you know, we can so. see how complicated it is, it is to see if it actually needs to have uh, a presentation for more explanation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do I need a motion or just, uh, just no? That's fine. Suggestion? I'll take it to the planning. Right. The the property property right next to Cole, did I hear that right? Yeah, and I have the the sample. This is what Crosby just adopted last year. Now, you know, some things may not be appropriate here. Can mm -hmm. you can get copies or here. can you get this to them? Can get sure. To Scott. Kathy, just just some yeah. you know, you like the starting it? point. Yeah. She has this. The starting point what is you receive it. As right. possible for it. Can, uh, get it to the zoning. And sure. then I can, I'll, I'll take it to them okay. at the uh, session. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Pocket. I uh, simply uh, want to echo what uh, the two gentlemen to my uh, far left uh, on, on the administrator's job he's done. I too was a member of those turbulent years that uh, Otto so fondly refers to, and they were very uncomfortable. Diane knows all about that. Oh, yes. Mike, you got a good piece of it. <laughs> uh, and it's it's a real pleasure to, to see a meeting run the way it should be. It's an upset about that. It's just a pleasure to be here. A um, couple of quick comments uh, to the, to the uh, maintenance staff on the columbarium. Uh, who finished the columbarium out there at the cemetery where we just had the butterfly release, which is with a huge success as it always is. And I would encourage all of you folks here, if you haven't been out to Pelican Woods Cemetery and Nature Trail, I would encourage you to go out and look at the golf course that we, did, we built out there. Uh, it's absolutely stunning and absolutely beautiful and one of the finest cemeteries in the state. And I take that as a fact. I was involved in it very heavily along with the state. One of the best was the comment made by the state for a new cemetery. That's unheard of in that industry. So my compliments, uh, Joe, to you and your guys and everybody who was involved in that did a superb job. And the columbarium uh, installer, the fellow who designed it and built it and installed it, said it's one of the best finished that he's ever seen. Took pictures, he's going to use it for advertising. I said, it's going to cost you. <laughs> 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 Lastly, uh, a brief comment uh, on an incident that I uh, experienced today in our wonderful city. When I left uh, my home early this morning, at 8.30 or so, I encountered uh, two very young children. I find out they're 10 years of age. I guess I'm somewhere between eight and nine and I wasn't very far driving down the middle of the road in a golf cart. And they weren't tall enough folks to see over the steering wheel. I've witnessed a lot of that over the last year or two. And I had a meeting today with Chief Mershman and with the city administrator and researched our recently passed ordinance which allows children or anybody to drive a golf cart in this city. That was 
middle of the afternoon when I had an opportunity to meet with those two gentlemen and express my concerns. They under, both understood that very well. And when I went home, uh, I did contact uh, at the administrator's uh, uh, advice, uh, the League of Minnesota Cities, and he mentioned a, a letter that he got from them. And I spoke with uh, Megan Hafner. She's an attorney. The only one that handles city streets, from what she tells me. Very articulate young lady. And she emailed me. <laughs> they go home at 5, and I got this at 5.01. So I. I just make mention of that briefly and what my intention is to meet again with Chief Mershman and the administrator and see if I am able to craft um, an amendment to the ordinance concerning simply young children. I'm very concerned about the city's liability. I'm concerned about my liability. And that really brought it to my attention today. So that's all I have to say, Mayor. I'm going to meet with these gentlemen whenever they got time to see me. And uh, Joe, I'll, I'll leave this with you tonight. Okay, sure. And you can send it over to the chief and yep. you, you can look at it and then we'll get an appointment together for 15, 20 minutes, kick it around. I just have some ideas. And lastly, I don't want to destroy the ordinance. I don't want to discontinue that ordinance. What I do want is some responsibility on this city's part for young children driving a golf cart. That we can control. Bicycles, we can't. Well, we can control that too. That may be going too far. But we can control golf carts and young children under the age of 15. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, I forgot one thing, and maybe Kevin can speak on it, but tomorrow night, um, Pequot Lakes is having, uh, help me out. Thank you. Are we, when we are involved with that, right? We are really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, just save it. Lakes. Oh, yeah. You bet. Yep. Okay. And so correct me if I'm wrong, but it's uh, six, five to eight? Five, five to eight. Five to eight. Trailside Park. Trailside Park. There's going to be carnival stuff going on and just law, law enforcement and the community getting together and just interacting and yes. things like that. So uh, hopefully a point, great yes. event that anybody can join. I know sure everybody um, comes. My family and I are going to be attending. So Very good. just want to make mention of that. Thank you for participating. That's great. Better yet. That's it. Better yet. <laughs> Uh, next item of business is the commission reports from Planning and Zoning Commission. We have uh, the hopefully the uh, the final uh, update for the uh, comprehensive plan. I hope you've had time to uh, review all of this. Uh, after the last council meeting, we had several items of concern. They've been uh, <coughs> and looked at by uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission, and what is attached here is the re recommended changes to the. Uh, uh, to the plan for council's administration. We have uh, resolution 1611 to accept these uh, uh, recommendations, these changes to the comprehensive plan. And uh, at this time, I'll uh, entertain a res resolution to approve res resolution 1611, and uh, then we'll have discussion. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a too. Mm -hmm. Is there a, uh, a motion to approve resolution 1611? Yes, sir. So moved. I'll second. Discussion. Um, Councilman Maroney, I'll start with you. Uh, hats off to the uh, Planning Commission. It looks like they went through this again diligently. I appreciate that uh, they got the strike through copy uh, as we directed last time so they could uh, look through this once again. Um, looks like there's a few changes to be corrected on that, so I appreciate that. Well, I went through the uh, changes, and um, <laughs> I still have some difficulties with what's, what's being recommended, and it's not 
and based on I, I, I just don't think there was a clear understanding on the part of the committee and, and the members of the PNZ what I was getting at with some of my concerns and um, a little disappointed we're not having the joint gathering with the PNZ and the Park and Rec and the City Council to go over these matters a little more uh, succinctly than than what we're doing tonight and uh, you know you just kind of give up after a while I'm summing up Shreem on this one and and uh, I know there's going to be problems in the future based on what's being said here because the interpretation is so loose and so open a lot of it can be handled administratively that was part of my reason for bringing these concerns to the City Council <clears throat> for example I think the discussion that they had on the uh, on objective uh, five uh, uh, we, we've had some issues in areas of uh, commercial industrial multiple family kinds of uh, land uses <coughs> where uh, a developer will come in with what I call a, a napkin uh, plan something that's scribbled out on a eight and a half by 11 paper uh, extremely general in nature and then as time goes by we pay for it because somebody will complain saying well this isn't what we thought was in the mix and then we're back to square one and uh, hard feelings uh, develop <clears throat> because of misunderstandings and so on um, I think there would have been opportunity to explain and show examples of what a site plan is and what a landscape plan is and when they are required when they're not required but I think we're just too loose in this city on certain matters that come before the PNZ um, where the where the uh, information is is just not complete enough and like I said down the road we start having problems uh, another item that I uh, wanted to discuss with a joint meeting had to do with all of these lots we have uh, that for all pretense and purposes uh, are not tax producing uh, we have a number of them that are going tax forfeit all because uh, we we don't service them with sewer and when the comprehensive plan was developed we were told that the city is in control of its destiny as far as on-site sewage in other words we can be more restrictive than what the uh, state or the county uh, requires and that's what we tried to do we tried to provide some alternative innovative means of providing opportunity for development on these small lots <clears throat> that under uh, present conditions under in using present on-site sewage disposal you literally can't develop them we require for example somebody has to go out and <coughs> buy lots on either side of them and create a large enough uh, land mass <coughs> We've got issues down on Lake Osinawaki that uh, would be very expensive for the city to uh, to provide the uh, traditional sewage collection and, uh, and treatment. Uh, but there are al alternatives that uh, the engineers who, who appeared before the comp plan committee when this was being developed were showing us all sorts of things that could be considered. <clears throat> I would hope that that would still be in the mix somewhere down the line because I this city has a big problem and and, uh, and uh, those of us who are on the comp plan committee I think came to grips with it a lot of lots sitting there on paper there I hate to use the word worthless but if you can't develop it and the city doesn't provide you with some opportunities to develop it you sit holding the bag and um, uh, I, didn't, I did have one individual that called me and he said has the city ever given any thought to creating uh, an authority like a housing and redevelopment authority uh, that would 
exercise, for example, uh, eminent domain, I guess is the term he's using, but I don't know if that's the correct term or not, where you would actually buy up large tracts of land, uh, these lots, at these what I call substandard lots, and replant them, and then put them back out for sale. Uh, unfortunately, there's some upfront costs that I don't think the city wants to absorb. Uh, I think, you know, a, a, a bond issuance, for example, to go out and do this. I don't think the city has the, uh, the tax base to even think about doing something that would be of that magnitude. But again, we have this problem, and as we go down the road, it's going to get worse, not better. And uh, something for the council and the PNZ to consider. Again, I, my point is, I think a joint meeting of the PNZ, the council, and the park and rec would have been uh, a good thing to have, and maybe we could still think about having it. I think it's good for us to meet in joint sessions uh, like that so we can discuss these issues. That's all I have to say. I agree with Otto. Um, when I saw this back here and I'm thinking, oh my God, I missed the meeting because I thought we were having a joint meeting with the PNZ to do this. Also, parks have not had an opportunity to comment. We haven't had a meeting where people can come back with comments. <coughs> change the, 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 parks, the park committee created that park portion that's in the conference plan. And have, they have not had any chance to turn their comments in or discuss it. So I, I'm not ready to vote for this at this time until I can bring something back from parks. <coughs> Councilman Bakken. I have nothing to say. Let me back up on that. Let me back up on that. Forgive me. Um, Otto has a point. To a degree. Uh, I, I too think a, a, a input of a joint committee would, 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 would have helped. Uh, I'm not so sure how quick that can be accomplished and how much that's going to back this off or push this further off. Is there a hurry? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I, well, if we don't do it, you call the roll and it, 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 the vote will, will tell the tale. Um, the mayor wanted this done by what, the first of the year? Am I right? We're in this. We're in the August. I need your input. Yes, sir. Some input from you on your thoughts. You still stand behind that decision? Uh, yes. The, the, Don't uh, mean to put you on the spot, but I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, the uh, uh, this whole process was started mid last year with the target date of having it done by the end of the year, um, and that was indeed a doable process. We are not seeking to totally rewrite it. This is just the five-year update, uh, and five years hence, we would be doing a complete update and doing it essentially all over again and yeah. doing getting all of the final updates. The uh, inputs that we received from Park was just to update the plan that they already had written and incorporate that into the, it was in, it was an addendum essentially to the uh, comp plan that was completed following uh, the <coughs> issuance of the comp plan previously and that was just essentially rolled into the uh, this updated comp plan um, so i guess i would be hesitant to say why do we need to go back and have you know seek comments from the document that they essentially supplied us several years back um, thank you that's you know that's essentially it. So at this point I'll call the question. All those in favor? I have a question before we move on. <clears throat> Gary, was there ever discussion in front of the PNZ about a joint meeting with PNZ Council? My re Parker? recollection, no. No. No, Otto, there was not. And in, 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 in retrospect, I regret that there wasn't. Well, I can't imagine why it wasn't brought. I can't either. Uh, but 
The answer is no, and in retrospect, I again, I wish there had been. So do I. And I'm not saying what, mm -hmm. what they brought before us is bad or wrong or inferior. It's probably su superior in mm -hmm. most cases. Some places it's a change of direction, and I think mm -hmm. it's, it should still be commented on by parks. And I. I don't understand the need for a big rush. Um, like I say, this is a project that has been ongoing but it, it, for it, almost a year now. But if we get it to where we're satisfied with it, isn't that better than having it done hurriedly? At this point, though, we all had the opportunity to comment on that already. Well, we didn't. Parks yes. people didn't. Yes, they did. We, no, we, we didn't. We got the update from them. We also provided them with a copy of the updated plan. They have it, but we never had a meeting. The last meeting was canceled. The meeting that they were given it, they said, well, I'll return comments to you if we have any, and nobody did. But they all took the, the plan home. I remember that. I, I, that I remember. And as council, we all had an email sent to us asking if there's additional input to be that. I, I had nothing at that point. I don't think yeah. that was the, what the parks people took out of it. <laughs> I, I think they maybe didn't hear that. I think I, I know for I know for certain one person was not me. <laughs> it was uh, expecting that come at a meeting. Uh, okay. Uh, any further discussion? I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. The mayor votes aye. So it's approved. Final comment. Can I get a final comment in, Mayor, for the for the for that motion to, to tag on to it? Yeah, just okay. what I would like to see is the suggestion Otto made, Diane made, a, a next go around, everybody gets involved. Next go around is a big whopper rewrite. Right. And the next that then next next everybody gets will involved. Will be due approximately three and or approximately four and a half years from now, and the. Uh, the starting of that will be about a year and a half ahead of time. So we're we're looking at, you know, about a year and a half down the road. Two years. Two, st two years down the road to actually be starting a full-blown comp plan update. But the point you're starting from may be different than what... That's why we have a full-blown update. <laughs> so we, don't, we have a new starting point when we complete the new plan. That's right. Next order of business, um, everybody's aware of Janae Broxenberg's resignation, and we will be in need of temporary assistance for finances. Um, and as part of the um, finance committee, we did discuss several options, and the best option by far, I think, is the uh, to work with uh, NJPA through uh, <coughs> Acton Meyer AEM, an accounting firm, to provide a temporary assistance. Um, they do have a high expertise, and they do this for several cities. Um, and along with that, we can get NJPA to assist us with a 50-50 match up to $7,500 to uh, uh, provide the uh, uh, temporary help that we need until we are able to uh, hire a new person to replace Janae. Um, so you have before you uh, accounting, uh, contract for accounting services to AEM. Uh, to hey, move that uh, contract, Mayor. Uh, is there a second to that motion? Second. Uh, discussion? Councilman Robachan, I'll start with you. Well, I'm involved in the Finance Committee and, and many administrations in the past. And for the first time this year, I've been exposed to the in intricacies of an accounting system for a this, uh, small city. Um, and, and the budget is huge. Uh, I was very, I've been very impressed on the way it's been <coughs> executed by Janae. She's a brilliant young lady. Uh, and the administrator's input uh, has been invaluable. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a real loss to this city. But I think this, I know this is the best plan going forward to select someone that can fill her shoes. Councilman Williams. No other comments. Councilman Schmidt. Uh, no comment. Councilman Robachan. No 
Councilman Barney. I uh, just noticed a clerical error on the project engagement letter. Uh, it says August 1st to January 1st, 2017. Now, although the contract says we have a 30-day exit clause, uh, the contract is actually January 31st, 2017. Throughout the contract. Thank you, Michael. Like I say, we have a 30-day exit grace, and we hope not to extend that. But just I can't know. I'll talk um, to him tomorrow about it. They'll be here. I'll talk to him tomorrow <clears> about <throat> it. Uh, motion to approve. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Contract is approved with AEM. Mayor, just as a side note, um, advertisements went out in the paper for this week. Okay. It was posted on the League of Minnesota Cities website today, uh, along with the Minnesota Clerks Association, Clerks and Finance Association. Um, so we've started the process. Uh, if we get a, a good applicants, we could possibly be appointing somebody at the October meeting. Okay. Very good. We'll see. Pretty pretty large shoes to fill. Yeah, that's right. Janae has done an excellent job for us in keeping all this stuff and uh, the way she handles the uh, audits and stuff. It's it's a, a pleasure both for us as well as the auditor. So mm -hmm. Janae is very well to be uh, commended. Uh, next order is uh, a less than lethal policy from our uh, police chief. Basically, with current trends, we began adding alternatives to lethal force, and uh, this new policy is basically to uh, <coughs> approve the policy using this less uh, using uh, beanbag <coughs> shotguns uh, and how they're going to be uh, uh, carried and uh, and used. So we have a. Uh, Less than lethal uh, policy. Uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve that. I'll make a motion. Second. Um, further discussion? Councilman Maroney? No. Councilman Schmidt? Well, I'd like to hear from the chief before we vote on this uh, as to you know, some of the background and the reasons okay. why this is being brought to the council. Well, I'm sure you can all relate to the current trend, but we began this. Uh, talking about this a couple years ago. Uh, shotguns are not uh, considered as effective as, as rifles are nowadays. We've all um, migrated from shotguns to rifles. And uh, we were looking for a uh, better use for the shotgun uh, other than just breaching doors. And um, with today's uh, atmosphere and it pushed it forward and uh, there was a, a, a training that was uh, relatively inexpensive in May um, so we took advantage of that and uh, Jay our uh, firearms trainer attended that training so he's ready to uh, train the rest of us and we've got the, uh, the new forearm and stock uh, purchase and we're ready to go. Anything else? Can I, uh, yeah. uh, Chief, the the term that they use, less lethal uh, response to re resistance. Um, I don't know. I read that, and I'm and I'm thinking uh, it it almost implies that every action a cop takes in regards to resistance is lethal. That's not. I mean, your guys. No, that's not, I guess that's not how I take it. Um, we have uh, varying levels of force that we use. Um, we've migrated from, from the term use of force because it's, it makes uh, makes us look worse. Um, we're responding to um, what <coughs> the people are doing, and that's where uh, we've changed the terminology to response to resistance. And the less lethal um, terminology really just, these beanbags can be lethal if you hit the wrong spot, um, clearly. Um, but it has a, a less chance of causing 
death or great bodily harm and still incapacitating a, an individual. Um, in particular, as a policy, you know, it, it, uh, suicide. And um, we get a lot of those nowadays. And uh, in some areas, it's, it's suicide by cop is, a, is an issue. And we would like to avoid that whenever possible. Um, and, and this gives us another alternative. Tasers aren't everything that the media made out to be. Um, they have their one shot and you have to reload. Uh, the darts don't always penetrate. Uh, in northern Minnesota, in our cold times, heavy folding makes it difficult for those. So it, it, it's another tool to uh, reduce the ability to take uh, another life. How much of this was motivated by uh the, the legal professions and the various governmental entities. No one is pressuring us to to uh, adopt policy or, or or do this. Uh, it's just common sense. Um, the shotgun they have been replaced with rifles. Um, the uh, cops don't want to kill people. Um, they want uh, you know most cops want to the business wanting to help people. Like I say, uh, one of the uh, more prevalent uses of these uh, rounds, because we don't have too many riots, would be uh, for suicide of individuals. And uh, you've seen in the brief um, the mention of that numerous times. <coughs> Myself and Brian and both fought with an individual um, <coughs> through the night. Um, so there's definitely need for more options. Well, I, I, I can say this with some certainty that I, I don't subscribe to less than lethal when it comes to protecting my life and my family. If somebody enters my domicile, uh, they will meet with lethal force. And um, uh, I feel that the forces here, our, our police forces here to serve and protect. I would be very concerned if this is part of some kind of a movement that is meant to neuter the police department, keeping them from protecting uh, the people in our community. As I look across our nation, I detect there is something going on where I believe the police department, you hear it when, when they, they there's this big hullabaloo because uh, certain departments around the country were using quote quote military style equipment and they were told not to do that. Makes people feel nervous and feel bad. Well, you guys don't walk around with this gear on all the time. You only certain situations, correct? Our SWAT teams in Growing County has a lot of military stuff that they use, correct? Correct, and it's needed. Yeah. But so. That's not well, okay. I, I just wanted to have my say on this because, I, I, like I said, I see things occurring in this country uh, at a very rapid rate right now. Ten years ago, we wouldn't be talking about this. Mm -hmm. And now we are, and it bothers me. I think all you have to do is look at how the people in this country feel by how this, if, if you own stock in Ruger, for example, or Smith & Wesson, you're doing pretty good. That's all I have to say. I don't have anything to say. I'm not as maybe paranoid as Otto. <laughs> I'm all for giving the officers an option to deal with someone who is, is you know, maybe temporarily out of their head. You don't necessarily want to put something through their heart, you know. You just want to lay them out for a while. <laughs> And calm the situation down. So, I think this is just a, another way that they can do their job for us. Councilman Bakken. Only one question: You've replaced the shot shells with the bean bags. Am I correct? <clears throat> for those uh, less lethal weapons, um, they're still in their shotgun. They're capable. Of I understand that. I know what an 870 is. Um, the officers who carry the less lethal firearms, the, the less lethal shotguns, 
will not carry any ammunition, um, any lethal ammunition. They will only carry the main bag rounds. So but they've got the rifle and, and the pistol. They have the rifle. That's uh, that's end of story. Thank you very much. Okay. All those in favor of the uh, policy for uh, less lethal, uh, the, the less lethal po policy, say aye. 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 As opposed? Policy for less lethal force is uh, approved. Uh, next item of business is uh, one that came up suddenly a couple months ago. We talked about the, uh, uh, <coughs> the changes that had to be made to lift station one. And Joe Zierden gave us a, a good estimate as to what all of this was going to cost. Well, it also well, it turned out that uh, his cost was uh, for the bypass hardware and labor was uh, approximately uh, $4,000 short of what the firm did came in. And as this is an exigent repair, we need to get this done. This is kind of a, uh, 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 we, we need to approve this and the, the request here to approve an additional 4,000 funds to complete the repair. Can I make a motion? Is there a second? Yes. Two. Comments? Uh, Councilman Bakken. None. Councilman Williams. Councilman Schmidt. Where is, where is the solicitation again, just to refresh my memory? Uh, right across from the Conservation Speaking of one more. Okay. <clears throat> Councilman Murray? No. All those in favor of uh, applying or uh, authorizing initial $4,000 uh, for the uh, repairs of, uh, or for the upgrade of uh, List Station 1? Aye. 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 So. Uh, by indicating aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, and that completes our agenda for tonight. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Uh, just give cap.